Let us worship God. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Let us line the road with beauty and pave its way with acts of justice. For the Holy One is coming our way, the giver of life and the source of living water. The Lord be with you. Loving God, you sent your prophet John to prepare your way among us, to call us to repentance and make our pathways straight. Strengthen us to live lives of steadfast love and faithfulness as we await the Messiah's return, that all may see your reign of peace through your just and gracious rule. Amen. Seated, please. Salvation is nearer to us than when we first believed. The night is far gone. The day is near. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Prepare the way of the Lord, your prophet says to us. Forgive us when we have failed to prepare your way. Forgive us when we have stood in your way. Instead, when we let the challenging words of your prophets roll off our lives, rather than let them spark change, when we walk around a neighbor in need, rather than encounter a chance of compassion. Forgive us, O Lord, and grant us assurance that the glory of your coming does not depend upon the righteousness of your followers. Forgive us, O Lord, and free us to try again.
prophet declares, the wilderness will rejoice and the dry land will blossom. The people of God will return with joy and singing. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Since God in Christ has forgiven us, let us also forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Friends, grace to you and peace in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We welcome you to worship the second Sunday of Advent. I'm delighted that you are here. I first want to thank you and celebrate the remarkable turnout yesterday as we provided a food drive for our friends in counties east of us. Thank you for your wonderful contributions and for all who made that happen. I want to lift up a couple of announcements. First is about our, turn, our alternative Christmas market, which continues online this year. Uh, the link is went out in the blast and it's also uh, connected in the bulletin. It's open until the middle of December and there are 16 international and local organizations featured. Uh, we've joined with the children's ministry this year to contribute create a special shopping experience for the children of the congregation. It's a way to shop for good causes without ever leaving your own home. And this has been a feature of Westminster since 2008, and the congregation has raised and given away over $325,000 over those years for mission agencies. So we encourage you to take part in that. Also, I remind you that Sunday School continues online today. We have a number of features, the Faith and Fellowship class meets, but also our special series from the uh, Congregational Care Department on the Pilgrim's Progress Through the Pandemic, Adapting to Challenges of the Pandemic Across Ages and Stages. There'll be a panel uh, from a family with young children uh, Jess Hill, who is the head of Harpeth Hall School, talking about uh, education, and then finally a retired couple who will be on there as well. So we invite you to take part in that from 945 to 1045. And finally, I remind you that we're celebrating communion today, so if you have a chance, gather what you need, uh, some bread or juice or crackers or something so that later when we come to the table, you can participate as well. Come, let us continue our worship. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Holy God, our hope and our strength, by the power of your Spirit, prepare the way in our hearts for the coming of your Word, so that we may see the glorious signs of your promise fulfilled. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Mark's Gospel.
the first eight verses. Hear the word of the Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I'm sending a messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. John, the baptizer, appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for, all, for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people from Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, come soon. Lord Jesus, come Good news comes from the prophet Isaiah this morning, which is a bit of a surprise, seeing that the previous chapters were a bit harsh, but the 40th chapter suddenly makes an abrupt shift, suddenly to a grieving and futureless people, people who believe that God pretty much had given up on them. No, <laughs> good news, 
God is here. So from Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 1 through 11, hear the good news. Our ears are open. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. Grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Lord Jesus, come soon. Lord Jesus, come soon. Believe the good news, comfort, comfort, oh my people. Believe the good news, do not fear. Believe the good news that God comes with might. Believe the good news, the Lord might is shown in gentleness. He will gather his flock like a shepherd. He will gather his lambs in his bosom. This was the word of God to a people of God who were just worn out, exhausted. No one could go to church anymore. The temple was broken. Downtown looked like a war zone, closed up businesses. No one looked forward to anything. A people who said, in God we trust, well, they weren't so sure. The word of God was not to be found. Just blame and shame and all sorts of blah. But suddenly, God speaks. Suddenly, all the, what is past is finished, and God and friends believe the good news. Your sins are forgiven. How on earth do you think those people in that faraway land long ago responded? How did they respond to the good news? Maybe it's easier to ask yourself that question. How have you responded? Because not that long ago, in fact, just a few moments ago, God's word came out of nowhere and said, believe the good news, comfort, comfort, oh my people, believe the good news, do not fear, believe the good news, see that the Lord God comes with might, believe the good news, the Lord's might is shown in gentleness, he will gather his flock like a shepherd, he will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom. Do you believe it? Are you buying it? If not, what good is it? Can you call good news good if no one is buying it? I always wonder about the Gospel of Luke, those early chapters. I always wonder why the announcement of the Lord, the baby Jesus, came to shepherds in a field. Why them? 
I wonder if the multitude of the heavenly host came to the city, but the lights were too bright, the traffic too noisy, the politics too loud, the game in the fourth quarter, and it's really close. And the angel said, unto you this day in the city of David is a savior. Hello? Hello? <laughs> I wonder if the angel of the Lord tried different places. Meanwhile, there were people watching the news by night, and the angel of the Lord stood among them there, right there in the television room, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. I bring you good news of great joy. Can, can, can you just shut up for a second? Uh, uh, Gabriel, just be quiet. They, they, I'm trying, they stole the election. And Gabriel just packed up his army and went to the next home. I bring you good news, great tidings of joy. What, are you crazy? The pandemic is out of control. Democracy is teetering. I wonder if the angel Gabriel went door to 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 door, and the only people on earth ending up buying it were some shepherds out in the field watching their flock by night. And they were amazed by it, drawn to the light of it, and took the good news to heart. Let us go and see this thing that has taken place, that the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe, the babe, lying in a manger. And they departed, praising God for all that they had seen and heard, believing the good news. And so it is that the good news has come before us. Any takers? I suppose if the devil is alive and well in this world, has got us into temptation. The devil's voice is one that has its hooks in us. The devil is so good at it these days. The news media knows how to tease us into drinking in the poison of division. Social media has got this way of getting into our brains and just making us turn the page, turn the page, turn the page, and just, just, just turn the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. It's got us believing that our lives are graded by our popularity. Oh, if the devil is alive and well these days, the devil knows that pornor pornography is just two clicks away. It's just so easy, so quiet. Temptation is just to drink, to drink, to drink, alcohol. But temptation, I've never seen it so bad as it is now. And so sad to see so many young people ruining their lives to temptation. And addiction alcohol and drugs, and marriages being broken up because of it, because we have to get numb to this world. Believe in my voice, says the devil. The addiction. If there is a devil in this world, I know how he'd work make us so addicted to the darkness we wouldn't be able to see the light. Friends, believe the good news. The other day I texted Ch Chad Folk with a question. I, I asked, how did it go last night? 
Now, if you get that text from your pastor, you might answer, that's none of your business. But Chad has been helping to lead an effort to have our church involved in Room in the Inn this year. That there's good news for people who have been locked out because of the cold, because of the pandemic. Churches all around the city have taken the pandemic very seriously and have elected not to do Room in the Inn you got to take the pandemic seriously. I know that. I had a friend of mine die this week from the pandemic, from the COVID virus. 14 days from beginning to end, she was a nurse. I suppose the safe thing for her to have done was to stay home. But she was a nurse. I don't know anymore, do you? I don't know. So I don't know what you do when there's no room in the inn and the temperatures are in 20 degrees. Well, our session has elected to do ministry in the best way that fits the body of Christ here. You try to do the best you can, the very best you can. And we have taken our ministry off our site in downtown to the campus there. And so our church hosted folks downtown. And on Wednesday morning, I texted Chad and I asked him, well, how did it go last night? Chad reported his thankfulness the church who supported the effort to give the gentleman food. He reported to me his thankfulness that Devin Childers signed up to be a co-innkeeper. Chad said he was thankful that they had separate small rooms to sleep in. Everything was well spaced. That there were 10 gentlemen as guests that night, he wrote. Four were white, four were African American, and two were Hispanic. And of the ten, two were in wheelchairs. Three of them had lost their jobs and their homes due to COVID, and four of them were going back to work in the morning. Chad wrote, while I admit I was dreading last night, I admit I was dreading last night. It turned out to be one of the best nights of the year. All of the gentlemen we hosted would not have had a place to stay had it not been for Westminster's participation. Friends, believe the good news. Act on the good news. Live the good news. Yesterday, the cars and the trucks, they just kept rolling into the parking lot. They just kept rolling in. Because there are folks who believe the good news. That in a world where there are people who are hungry, no. Not on our watch people who are always watching for a savior. And they will offer the gift of their souls. Ah, the devil. The devil has a desire to get us addicted to all that will destroy. But there are friends, friends of God, People who believe the good news, there's the shepherd who will lead us through the dark valley. Believe the good news. There's a shepherd that has a mercy, has mercy to heal our failures. The Lord knows I've failed these years. The Lord knows I've failed trying to navigate this pandemic. 
But there is mercy. And we have to believe the good news of that mercy. The shepherd has enough innocence to relieve our guilt. Friends, it's good news. A shepherd has a soothing voice, a gentle touch, and you are in the loving arms, always in the loving arms of a Savior. Friends, believe the good news. Let us stand and affirm what we believe using the words from a declaration of faith. God keeps God's promises and gives us hope. In the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, God kept his promises. All that we can ever hope for was present in Christ. But the work of God in Christ is not over. God calls us to work for yet seen. The hope God gives us is ultimate confidence that supports us when lesser hopes fail us. In Christ, God gives us hope for a new heaven and earth, certainty of victory over death, assurance of mercy and judgment beyond death. This hope gives us courage for the present struggle. And one of the ways we continue our hope in the present struggle is to provide for the work of the Lord in this place and beyond our walls. In the back of the bulletin is information about how to make an online donation, and we encourage you to continue to uh, give freely of the fruit of your lives and of your labor. So come, let us worship God.
Friends, believe the good news. This is a joyful feast to the people of God, and people will come from east and west and north and south to be at table with him. Believe the good news that if you are hurting, there's healing here. Believe the good news that if you're feeling guilty, there's love and mercy here. Believe the good news that if you've had bitterness in your soul, taste and see that the Lord is good. Believe the good news. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is joy to give you thanks and praise. O God of wonder, your spirit did not rest but transformed chaos into creation. The mountains crying glory with one voice, the hills echoing the glad refrain. You welcomed us into your garden of peace and hope. But we flocked to sin and death, those entertainers who seduce us with their temptations and tricks. The prophets were sent to help us to understand our brokenness, but we turned our backs when they sang of your hopes for us, and so you prepared Jesus to come to us so we might know the very nearness of your kingdom. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with the celestial choirs and with the faithful of every time and place, forever sing to the glory of your name. are you, God, of all creation, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your child, who became our servant to save us. He came so that those who could only speak in anger to one another might sing songs of peace at your table. He came to shower the living waters of grace upon our hope-parched souls. He came to sweep death from the bottom of our hearts so we might dance in your life forever. Even now, as we prepare to celebrate his birth and ache for his return, Great is the mystery of faith. Come to us in these moments, God of Advent, pouring your spirit upon the bread and the cup that we might be drenched by your grace and peace. God, in this Advent season, we hear a voice crying in the wilderness. Let us prepare a way of the Lord. O God of our salvation, hear our prayer as we pray for your church. We might be a sign of your promised realm so make us ready to meet our Savior Christ when he comes again in glory. We pray for the world. Make a way in the wilderness of this world. Bring justice and equality to every land. Let all creatures know of your saving love. For those working so diligently across the globe on the vaccine and those working to figure out ways to distribute it, give them, O oh God, great wisdom and energy. We pray for this community. Send messengers of your way among us to kindle in us a passion for what is right and cleanse us from all corruption. We pray for loved ones near and those far away who need your healing touch or your holy embrace. Let your tender mercy shine on them. Give light to those who wait in darkness. 
and guide the feet in the path of peace. Prepare your way in us, O Lord, that we may rejoice and be glad when your reign of glory comes. Then, when we are filled with your justice and righteousness, send us forth into the wilderness of despair and loneliness to bring joy and hope, to be servants to the poor, to be voices for those silenced by oppression, to become a bumper crop of reconciliation in a world strewn with the stumps from the violence of war and fear. Then when all time is ended, all pain and hurt is gone, you will welcome everyone to your table where we can sing glory with one voice to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. confidence of children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. So whenever you eat of this bread or drink from this cup, you proclaim the death of our Lord until he comes. So friends, these are the gifts of God, and they are for all of us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. O holy God, for the goodness and the good news of this feast, we give you thanks. For its mercy and love, we give you thanks. And so may we go forth believing the good news and living it so that all the world might see your light and be drawn to it. In Christ's name, amen. believers of the good news, never a better time than this to get up to a high mountain and to proclaim the good news. Make his ways straight. Go, knowing that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit are with us all, and all God's people said, amen. <laughs>